All right, let's go to the phones. First of all, am I talking to Ando? Let's see if we get, we got Ando on the line. You know we do. Yes, sir. What's up, brother? How you doing tonight? Man, I'm blessed by the best. Uh, is it just you tonight, or we got others in the crowd? No, oh, man. You know, it's me and Rob Billis, you know what I'm saying? All right. That's cool. Uh, we got a chance to play one of your tracks last, uh, about a, 20 minutes ago. So what do you think of the show? I love, I love the show, man. The, the, the show is excellent. Cool. Uh, first of all, give me your background, man. Uh, d- d- where did you grow up? Uh, where in Chicago did you grow up? Uh, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Born and raised on 57 in Union Mood, Old Gill Gardens. That's where I pursued to do my rapping. Do you have a decent childhood? Uh, decent parents? Did you grow yeah, up? Oh yeah, I, I got, I got most, I got some of the best parents. You know, rest in peace to my dad. He's been gone since '96. But yeah, I love a mama who take care of me. But you know, the streets always been hard. Uh, I hear you. Uh, when did weed first come into your life? Was it around you? Did you smoke it early? Uh, was it was it in your family? Was it in? Uh, give me give me the story of how uh, you came up on weed. Man. My pops used to smoke, man, good, good, good green out the corn seal bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and man, boy, you know how you is when you're young, you know, you downstairs, you eating, but you smelling some greens, but it ain't the greens on the stove. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, hey, I was, I was the Fruit Loop man. I followed my nose, you know? I hear you. He was, he was Toucan Sam. That's right. Man, oh, man. You know it. You got that right. Follow it around. So, uh... So it really did it ever have a stigma with you? Was it was it just something that was it was considered what people did? Because some parts of the country in this country, you know, it still has that stigma. We'll get into all the messages and the music and stuff. But so, did you grow up where people were just cool with weed? Where you grew up, is that how it was? Oh uh, yeah, well yeah, actually, because that was one of the main reasons that I tried it. You know, because I, 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 it was it was around me. You know. Everybody had it. I'm talking to Ando the Don. That's his name, by the way. Yes, nice. sir. Ando the Don. A N D O T H A D O N. You know. Hey, throw hey. throw me the other three names of the guys in the band, real quick. You know, Raw Business. We got Big Lou. We got T C O. And uh, give me, just give me. Do you know them from school? Do you know them from growing up? Did you meet them separately? How did you meet? How did you guys meet each other? We uh, we actually uh, you know what I'm saying we all met up. I actually didn't know none of them until I um, was introduced to Ruler World Records, you know. And uh, we had started they had, we we started the group, the individuals, you know what I'm saying. We actually all from different parts of Chicago. You know what I'm saying I'm from out south, you know what I'm saying in the hundreds. TCO he he farther out in the hundreds, you know what I'm saying. Rob Bennett, he from out west. Big Lou he from Harvey, you know so. We all just basically kicked up and took our talents from east side of the city and just put them together. Uh, I played that song "Weed Helps" a couple of weeks ago. Remember, remember the piano in it? Those guys. Remember, yeah. remember the piano sample had that hook to it. It, had it was real, just really cool. That really, really cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. Like a piano hook, and then it had the high pitch piano hook in there. Uh, uh. Hey, t- tell me about that song. I'm gonna play it later on and all. But, uh, it's about medical marijuana, but uh, uh, actually, kind of take me through the creative process. Uh, who does the writing? Who does the mixing? Do you guys do it together? Do you bring in a different producer? Take me to that 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 part of this conversation first. Yeah, well, as far as that that situation, you know, we all we all do our own writing. You know, everybody write their own lyrics. You know what I'm saying? We all work together on the hooks. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we had different producers at time to come in with the beats. But far as the song that you're talking about, the weed helps. You know, what motivated us to do that song was because it's a lot of people out there. They really need the marijuana, but we ain't got a lot of people fighting to help them get the marijuana. You know what I'm saying? So we felt it was up to us since we had people that was listening to us. We had a voice that was being heard to let people know just how much we do help. Absolutely. People out here with, like I said, eating disorders, you know what I'm saying, AIDS, you know what I'm saying, lack of home, all of that, you know what I'm saying? And that's what helps it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? But it's not an opinion, it's actually a fact. You know what I'm saying? So we just felt like it was up to us to express our feelings and, you know, get it out there to the world and let them know that marijuana is not a drug, it's a herb. That's right. When you started to put your stuff out there, when you started to, uh, you know, for the lack of a better term, put it on a CD or make it available at iTunes, 
and you started to get feedback, in other words, someone like maybe sent you an email back or someone checked out your music uh, and talked about that issue. Maybe someone said, hey, you know, my grandmother eats pot brownies or something. Your song's very cool. When you, st- when you guys started, he- you, know, you know what I mean? When you put it out into the universe, you put the energy out there, you put the message out there, but then when it comes back, that's when you kind of get the reward. Uh, tell me about that. How did that feel? Yeah, it, it actually feels good. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's nothing better to know that you actually reached out to somebody that not only just to somebody, but people that understand you and actually going through the problems that you're expressing. So once we get the feedback, you know what I'm saying, it really, it really lets us know that we're actually doing our job. You know what I'm saying? It's actually getting out to people. So when we get the feedbacks, like you say, from the calls, where people be like, yeah, my grandmama, she be sick, she be eating weed brownies to make her feel better. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate y'all standing up for the rights and trying to fight for it. You know what I'm saying? It, it gives us a, a place of security, letting us know that what we're doing is right. Hey, I got to ask you, when you listen to other people's music and they're singing about weed, name some of the people you listen to that uh, you enjoy their message. Oh, uh, man, you know, I love all weed songs because I love <laughs> weed. You know? and that's, that's the only right. Yeah. I, can't even, I can't even say who I like the best, who that weed song the best because... In reality, to be honest, the best weed songs I ever heard came from uh, this group called the Individuals. <laughs> and them, them boys hot. That's you know right. Saying? That's right. But Self-promotion, I, I, I baby. I my utmost respect to everybody that's trying to send out the message now. You know what I'm saying? Because we do have a lot of more people that's getting involved in it. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of more people doing weed songs now. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to legalize it and, you know what I'm saying, fight for it. So... It actually feels pretty good. Yeah, as it should, man. By the way, you can follow these guys at the individuals on Twitter. Now, which one of you? I'm looking at the picture on Twitter now. I see four of you guys. You're all wearing like pot T-shirts that have been airbrushed. Which one is you? There, left, right, middle, where? Um, I'm the I'm the sexy chocolate skinny boy. <laughs> <laughs> who's it? Who's the big? Who's that? Who's the real big brother in the middle? Oh, that's my man, Big Lou, man. Ha- has to be with a name like Big Lou. Yeah, it has yeah. to be the okay, Big Lou. Okay, there right? we go. Cool. All right. Very nice. Yeah, I noticed. Hey, you're blowing up on Twitter, dude. I, I think the first time I contacted you was only two weeks ago, and uh, you went from like 1,700 followers. You're over 4,000 followers already. Man, you know, hey, that, that's the good thing. You say two weeks ago it went from 1,700 to 4,000. You know, that's letting you know. That's right. It, it, it's moving. They're enjoying the music, man. They're definitely yeah, enjoying yeah, the music. Yeah, it definitely is. And I, I appreciate all, my, all our fans out there, man, that's supporting us right now. You know what I'm saying? Hey, real quick, Ando. Yep. I had a question for you. You know, you talked about how the message is starting to spread, and obviously, like, you're taking off on Twitter. The question I had for you was, A, how are the cops where you live? When you were growing up, you know, kind of with us down here in Tampa Bay, I, I remember it was always really sketchy. The, the cops were really strict on if they saw you smoking or anything like that, how have they been uh, in where you guys are from? Well, you know, you got you got the cops that be on that. You know, yeah, they want to harass you. They they don't want us to legalize it. You know, they see you smoking it. They want to come try to take it. You know what I'm saying? They want to try to invade your privacy. But then you also got some some cops that really don't do too much because they know deep inside they stoners also. Yeah, they're they're just doing they're just working a job, and they don't want to bust anybody smoking pot because they know it's not a problem. There you go. Have you guys had any backlash, any kind of negative publicity because of of the music that you write and the songs that you guys perform? Oh uh, no, honestly, no, 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 no negative feedback. See, that's cool. That's like that's an affirmation to me, Ledge. That's an affirmation that they're on message. The individuals are on message. And we're on message, too, with the way that the people feel. That's the funny thing about the truth, isn't it, Ando? That the truth just cuts through the bullshit. It always cuts through the bullshit. It, it, sometimes it takes people to wake up. That's what we talk about on this show. It's mm-hmm. We try to give you the truth. Sometimes it's a little hard to handle. But later on, when you, you realize it cuts through the bullshit, and when you look at this miracle plant, we talk about hemp, too, on this show. We don't just talk about weed. We talk about seeds that are food, fibers that are for clothing, fuel, you name it. It's an amazing plant. So when we talk about it, we don't just talk about the eye, the third eye getting fucked up. We talk about the medicine side. We talk about all parts of this plant. And the message is spreading, bro, and your music's doing that. What do you say we play one of your tracks, okay? All right. 
Okay, we're going to play High Daily right now. That's the one. High Daily. <laughs> hey, all right, all right. T- uh, tell me, tell me about this song. Tell me, uh, just give me the back history on this song, hey, real quick. Back history, man. To be honest, we was all uh, you know sitting in the studio, man. And we was uh, the beat was playing, and we know, like I said, when it come to to the hooks, you know, we all work together. You know what I'm saying? And we just sitting there smoking. And Rob Bennett just got up like, man, I get high daily. <laughs> and, you know, once he said that, the way the beat was going, you know, we just kept going with it. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, once you feeling it, you feeling it. You get all geeked. And once your head gets to bobbing, you know, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. We in there. You find that beat, man. Everything oh, else yeah. starts to so, fall in place. So we went in there and we, and we dropped it. And then, you know, we... We had we had people that was calling in that that we know for a fact get high daily. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hey, and hey, they was calling in. They was making you know now, hey, this is so and so, so and so, and I get high daily. Yeah, yeah. you know, Ain't a I, weekly thing. I, this a daily thing. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know a couple people like that. Uh, that might be in the studio. All right, all right. Let's play. I get high daily. This is the individual's dangerous conversation on radio. I O. They deserve the best Therefore I'm getting what they need And you know what the beat That gets us in my chest And I just love it When I'm coughing And choking chest Be burning my eyes Get watery And then my face Start jerking That mean that That stick is working She just doing her job I'm just maintaining No more straining Not the worst in this job Just take a couple of hits Homie you'll be seeing the stars Cause this that real shit This he'll be more than 16 bars